Hello everyone, we're having a nice little campfire, and we are here to tell each other some stories. And those stories just happen to be all from Harry Turtle Dove. They're from uh, a very terrifying, badly written alternate dimension. So what we decided to do was uh, both read Harry Turtle Dove series and then tell each other about them. Well, I chose the Atlanta series. And Tiger Star, what did you choose? Uh, technically, mine is more of just a giant book instead of a series, but it's one called The Two Georges. Oh my. Yes. That sounds that sounds fun. So what we decided to do is uh, on this video, we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about Atlantis. And then if you want to hear about Tiger Star's book, he has a video on his channel. Uh, so I'm, get, I'm just going to get right into it. The Atlantis series is three books, Opening Atlantis, The United States of Atlantis, and Liberating Atlantis. There is technically a fourth book, but it's just a collection of short stories and doesn't really matter. The reason I picked the Atlantis series is because of this map. <laughs> Oh, this map, map makes me laugh so hard. What if we take the 13 colonies and push them somewhere else? <laughs> I think it's an idea that is fun. It's a fun idea. Yeah. You, when you look at this, you think, okay, there's a lot of wacky alternate history scenarios that we could come from this. That is not how the book ends up at all. I picked this because I was expecting it could be some real turtle dove wackiness, like the World War series where aliens came down and, and fought everyone in World War II, but that was not what happened here at all. So the basis is that 90 million years ago, when Pangaea split apart, the eastern part of America just didn't continue with the rest of the continent. It just stayed right there. As the Atlantic opened up, uh, this one landmass just stayed smack dab in the middle of the ocean. It just so happens that this location of the continent coincides with the myth of Atlantis. So when humans happen to stumble across it in the 1450s, uh, they immediately call this place Atlantis. That's the name that sticks. Makes sense. In this world, it's not the Spanish that discover Atlantis. It's Bredens. Bredens discover it, and then they show our main character, this English sailor, where this landmass is. It's it's almost like a, a creepy guy in a hallway, and he goes up to our main character, and he's like, hey, buddy, you, you want to see a continent? And so our character then goes to this continent because a guy suggested it. Da -da -da. It's a whole new world. It's a whole crazy world with actual dinosaurs, birds. It's a continent of birds. No mammals really live on the island. It is almost like a giant New Zealand, which is exactly what it is. Uh, yeah. Harry Turtle Dove, when he wrote this book, he said that he had the idea directly inspired from New Zealand, and you can really tell. Yeah, I remember like reading about that. Uh, that's why like the Kiwis, like the national like animal of New Zealand, because there were so few other animals that managed to get over there. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool concept. I, you know, an, a landmass of birds that's really cool. The part where it gets kind of annoying, I guess you could say this for the whole series, is that there's such wasted potential with this whole thing. We literally have the eastern half of America in the middle of the ocean. There's so many crazy ideas you could do with that, and yet the series just does none of them. What strange creatures could be on this this landmass? Well, the only two that the book ever talks about really are giant emu equivalents called honkers, which are not afraid of humans, and uh, giant eagles. And that's kind of the most Turtle Dove does with the idea. Uh, he kind of just makes it New Zealand, but on another part of the world. Of course, none of these animals uh, know what humans are because the no people ever came to Atlantis. It's an entirely depopulated con uh, continent. No Native Americans made it to it. And so all of the animals are completely oblivious to what humans are. Don't even react when humans come up and just like bludgeon them to death. That is something that Turtle Dove will bring up about five to ten times throughout the first third of the book is how these giant birds just aren't familiar with humans and you can come up to them like dodos and just beat them to death see like uh, I, I feel like i could understand if it's like oh they're not scared of humans and so like they can be in like the same vicinity but i feel like just like any other animal you get too close or you physically attack it you think it would respond yeah so the way that the book does it is like you have to give them a good solid hit on the head first because if you don't 
they will like kill you immediately. Like there's a guy oh, okay. that he he hits the bird, misses, or he like doesn't kill it immediately, and the bird just gets pissed and it just like uh, <laughs> just kicks him across the area and he just dies immediately. So okay, that makes more yeah, sense. these birds these birds aren't like so stupid that they just like allowed to die. The problem is he just he just keeps repeating that constantly. I guess I can get into the the bigger issue with the whole book. So. Pretty much our main character is this English sailor who, upon discovering Atlantis, thanks to this Breton, he goes back to England and he, he decides, hey, England sucks. I'm going to make a colony. So he gets all his friends and family together and they all and they all just get a boat and they all just set sail and they go to what we would call Connecticut and they call this uh, new colony New Hastings. You know, it's very, very clearly a pilgrim analogy. They literally land in New England. It's a bunch of people that aren't funded by the crown, and they just go. All of these people, the main thing they're talking about is like, oh, wow, it's a whole different planet, uh, a whole different land that we aren't controlled by the nobles. We aren't controlled by the king. And they repeat that about 10 or 15 times. The issue with this book is that it doesn't really have characters. It has a bunch of archetypes that an author in the 21st century would imagine people in the 15th century being like. They all are good Christians. They all have a keen sense of 15th century English politics and history, even the women. Like, well, you, know, you know, Tim III, we're living in a new age of enlightenment right now. <laughs> oh yes, papa. It's, like, it's basically that. They all speak exactly the same. Doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter the gender, doesn't matter who they are. It gets very tiring, especially because uh, I, I listen to the audiobook. The audiobooks are usually like 14 hours long. For 14 oh hours, everyone everyone speaks the exact same in the same tone. And it's very hard to describe unless you actually listen to it and, or read it yourself. Uh, it's almost like a bunch of oblivion NPCs having a conversation with each other. You know what it kind of reminds me of, though? Like, what? you know how, like, with Lord of the Rings, how uh, Tolkien made the languages first? And he made the books to give his languages purpose, right? Yeah. It this almost feels like the like the same sort of thing, except with hey, I came up with this cool random timeline, but mm -hmm. I need an excuse to tell it to other people, so I'm gonna make yeah. a book around it. But then, well, they did a terrible job of that. Yeah, Turtle Dove books are really just about the summary of the scenario and the characters and 90% of the content doesn't really matter uh, because it's just about saying what happens in this world. I think we have this conversation anytime we talk about Turtle Dove. His characters are literally only there to observe the main character of the book and that's the world. Time passing is the main character in any Turtle Dove novel. I, I, I like that Tolkien equivalency. The way that Turtle Dove isn't like Tolkien, though, is that while T Tolkien used his characters to uh, explore this world, the world was at least interesting. The main problem I have with the Atlantis series, every major historical event that your average third grader is familiar with about American history still happens. It just so happens that the names are swapped and some of the factions change. The general history still occurs. Like pilgrims that aren't pilgrims still arriving in New England and setting up a colony because they don't want to be attached to the crown. There is still a, a, a war for revolution. It's a there's canon still event. A, yeah, there's, it's a canon event. There's still an American War for Revolution. There's still a War of 1812. There's still an American Civil War. Everything of early American history is the exact same, but it's just replaced with Atlantis. He literally just crossed out America and put it with Atlantis. Uh, there are no United States of America. They're the United States of Atlantis. They're uh, a Congress like Atlantis. And then I guess now, there's the no demographic expansion and otherwise it's exactly the same. Yeah, it is basically like there is no westward expansion, but it's just one island. Uh, and it's an island that they share with the French and the Spanish. The major difference in this timeline is that the English settled mainly in the north and the French and Spanish mainly settled in the south. So remember how I t said that there's the one guy in, in England that he discovered the continent and he brought everyone over to found New Hastings? Yeah. His last name was, uh, was Radcliffe. He was Edward Radcliffe. 
His family will control Atlantis for the next 200 years. Turtledove made it that the Radcliffe family is the most interesting family on the entire continent. Every main character is a Radcliffe. Any important political thing that happens is because of a Radcliffe. Uh, imagine like a super Washington, almost. But like every character in the American Revolution and like the Civil War and the founding of America, they were all Washingtons. See, uh, like, I, I don't understand how someone could think that that's plausible. Because like, you know, you take our own history, for example, like Washington... Maybe you can make a stretch and say, like, ah, oh, well, Robert E. Lee is kind of related to Washington. But then, like, other than him, like, where America wasn't running around with, like, ah, yes, President Washington V and yeah. his son, the General Washington the Seventh, and, you know. It feels like, um, the series feels like you took American history and you distilled it into five or six talking points and then simply crossed out like the biggest players in those events and replaced them with Radcliffe. There's Edward Radcliffe and he was the founder of the whole thing. So he was like the pilgrims. And then he had a son who then kind of like led to the, the founding of America and stuff like that. I think, was that son? I think that son was Victor. It was a Radcliffe. But there's a, yeah, there's, an, there's another Radcliffe uh, who is then called Victor Radcliffe, and he is this universe's Washington equivalent. So he helps the British defeat the French in this universe's equivalent of the French and, uh, French and Indian War and the Seven Years' War. And then, coincidentally, he leads to the independence movement against the British in the, you know, in the same way that Washington did. There's a pirate king in Buffalo called Red Rodney Radcliffe because there's pirates on the western... Uh, end of the continent ohio and indiana and like missouri and stuff like that though the their coastal regions now that can have pirates and stuff like that uh so anyway the, yeah there's pirates in buffalo victor radcliffe is the washington equivalent uh basically the radcliffs kind of are like the the founding fathers almost of atlantis and uh then in like the 1850s the illegitimate descendant of victor radcliffe I hate to say this. He he's a slave because because oh, no. you know how the f illegitimate descendant we could well I'll leave it at that and he leads a a slave revolt and that's that's the equivalent of the civil war in this universe. There's no like south or anything. It's like a it's like a slave revolt between from the slaves and the native americans. Because in this universe, they, they kidnapped Native Americans on the eastern side of the United States. And they, like, brought them to Atlantis. Which, how how did they, like, survive that journey? And <laughs> how is there enough of them for that? But, you know. I mean, I so guess it'd only be half of the Atlantic, so. It'd be, well, it's half. I'm just thinking of, like, from diseases. Because, like, the main reason that's slavery true. happened. Yeah. Um, but they call them copperheads. Which is, that's what they call them. Um. Oh and boy. so it's a native slave revolt, and that's the that's the like American Civil War. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, so for context, uh, I when I was like fourteen, fifteen in high school, I remember I read the Atlantis short story, the one that you didn't read. Uh, it was like in the it was like in a library. Was it the it, bird one, or was it the mystery? I, I don't remember. I just remember it was the one that was in a collection of short stories, and I was intrigued, and so I looked for the Atlantis series, and for whatever reason, the library only had, like, the middle book that was, like, oh, the, the... Uh, the Revolution yeah. era. United States of Atlantis. Yeah, yeah I, I remember reading it thinking, like, ah, oh, well, this isn't really doing anything for me, and so I never, uh, I never moved on, or I never read the first book. So, uh, I don't know how far into the timeline the series goes but that's it oh that's it because it, 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 it ends at civil war uh, okay so so it's an elementary school history class got it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah i and we know though that if it would have went farther they would have went to like world war one but there's atlantis well and... yes but, but what, what i'm getting at though is if you get to the modern day where you know you've got like the internet and social media do you mm -hmm. realize how many conspiracy theories there would be based on the fact that there's a radcliffe involved in every single political event on this continent 
it's, yeah. It's, instead of like Rothschilds or whatever the name is, it would be Radcliffe instead. It'd be the Radcliffe. Oh, yeah. uh, the Radcliffe. They, the they funded both sides of. They, they funded both sides of the Atlantean Civil War. <laughs> you know, it's a conspiracy. They were behind they everything. everything. Yeah. I want to. I want to know how exactly. A, that's a book to write. Write a book from a character's perspective, living in a turtle dove world, and the world is so stupid and dysfunctional, but they're reacting to it like a real person would. The Radcliffe <laughs> like, Code. Opening Atlantis is like three novellas in one. And so for the first novella, just as an example, we'll talk about how they don't like England, how this is a new world for them to call home and, and take over, how the honkers are stupid and they can bludgeon them to death. I can't believe they're called that. How they hate the Basque. They they bring them up like, oh, the Basque are smelly. The Basque have a weird language. And then they all agree on that. And then and then they just like go on and do their thing. And then one of them will just be like, hey, fuck those Basque guys. And then everyone goes, ah, yes, right you are. God be with you. And repeating the same concerns that they had in the last five chapters. And then time passes. And then those aren't their concerns anymore. Okay. And then they have new concerns that they bring up for like five to six times. And it really just feels like um, a student paper that you have to reach the word limit. I think that's the main thing I really just hate about the Atlantis series. Yeah, like... Is I, it's, so, it's so uninspired. Like, oh my god, it's so... I, I wonder, like, whoever... Like, I don't know if it's... If Turtle Dove has always had the same publisher. Probably not, but... I have to wonder if, like, some publisher is like, well, based on the sales of our sci-fi alternate history books, people are going to buy anything. Uh, you got to meet a quota of three books. And Turtle Dove is like, well, I've only kind of got an idea for one. Eh, I can stretch it out. Yeah. But even the first book, uh, it doesn't even seem like he really has that much of an idea. He had to get something out. Yeah. Uh, it just feels like he's on autopilot. I, there's times before that Turtle Dove will insert real history and stuff and just be like, oh, it's it's our history, but different. Uh, but this is just he scratched out historical people's names and events and simply replaced it with Radcliffe and Atlantis. That's it. That's the main, the main problem is that's just boring. Even listening to this audiobook is a struggle it is an absolute struggle i was sitting on the floor yesterday staring at the ceiling and my wife came in and she thought something legitimately was wrong because i just had this look of anguish on my face and she's like oh my god what happened and i'm like this book sucks you, you <laughs> i just, hate this you were just <laughs> muttering kill kill over and over again it's monotonous but um like this is a thing that like turtle dove does not only like in his alternate history books but they're like for those who don't know like turtle dove doesn't only write uh purely alternate history he also writes a lot of uh general science fiction i haven't read too many of his like normal science fiction books uh like there's one where it's like oh what if like yeti cryptic like sasquatch cryptid creatures become a an intelligent species in america and so humans <laughs> coexist with them like you know wa wacky yeah. stuff like that um but he has several books that i haven't read but like uh maybe i'll see bits and pieces of or i'll look at the summary on the back where kind of like atlantis it's literally just hey what if uh human historical events but in world of magic so like there there is a book um, and I forget what it's called, but the summary of the book is that it's basically the American Civil War, but knights and magic, the North and South are flipped, and it's uh, hair color racism instead of skin color racism. Oh my god. Oh, and they're called serfs instead of slaves, because of course they are. Oh my god. It's medieval oh times. And like the, the front cover of the book, and may, maybe Cody will put this like on the video screen, but like the, the cover of the book, you see what looks like an evil Ulysses S. Grant, but wearing like some sort of crown, playing chess with uh, a determined Robert E. Lee also wearing a crown, but they're wearing like medieval soldier clothing instead of Civil War clothing. And, oh my god. Yeah, so like, and he has like another one where it's World War II, but set in like the world of magic or whatever. And this this almost feels like he was almost wanting to write one of those, but he couldn't even 
be bothered to come up with something like magic or yetis or something. He just came up with American emus. It's like he knows 10 or so historical events like that have ever happened and then just kind of repeat them, repeat them on on mass. <laughs> Yeah, like, from, from what I know, like, from what I know, he has, like, a PhD in, like, Byzantine history, and yeah. uh, I, I know that, like, he has one fantasy series where it's, like, a Roman legion gets, uh, gets, like, time vortexed into a different dimension, and I've heard that that series is alright, but I, I'm kind of surprised that he doesn't write more uh, alternate history books that are set in, like, Roman Byzantine times, maybe, like... I wonder if it better. just doesn't sell as well. That, that's probably true. But, you know, I, I'd imagine, like, you know, somewhere closer to his expertise, it would be better written than just, uh, ah, these are the events you learned in elementary school, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. The problem with, with Atlantis is that this is something that's so different from our regular history. At that point, just go pure fiction. There's no reason that it needs to be, you know, an American Revolution or even a war of 1812 for some reason, and then also a civil war. Like, this is a completely different landmass. There's no, you know, proclamation of 1763. Uh, it's just everything's completely different, so just have fun with it. And and he just doesn't. Um, and it really sucks, because it's almost like, it makes me want to, like, almost make my own video of just, like, actually doing this as a thing, and then and then even having more fun with it. Because Turtle Dove just did it, so now I'm, I'm just kind of left, uh, <laughs> I'm left disappointed. Because I'm like, man, this could have been a, a fun idea at least. Yeah, and like that—that's almost uh, partly why, like this time, because like we've done Turtle Dove collabs for what, like, like three different Years. times now. We got like yeah. three different ones. We we've done like most of like his main body of work, but that's kind of why, like this time, I I kind of wanted to have like this format because now we're kind of getting into the works where it's just you know copy paste headache <laughs> it's like you can't even like it's hard to even make like jokes about this anymore it's just you gotta let it out and just talk about how terrible it is and it's disappointing you know you don't want to just keep making fun of turtle dove like this but well, I, when I'm these willing books to exist believe, it's, like, mm. it's like i'm willing to believe that he's aware of his limitations he got a lucky break, and now he's just, you know, milking it for what it's worth, and, you know, I don't blame him. Yeah. It's clearly you working have, if, for him. But then there's just, you know, everyone everyone always has some stinkers. Yeah. That's just how it happens. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's so many videos I have that are just absolute stinkers. Yeah, and you, you know, I'm pretty sure he's probably, he probably knows that this wasn't his best work. Uh, so yeah. nobody go and harass Turtle Dove over this stuff either. I think this, vi this came out in 2007. The Atlanta series did so. Yeah, so yeah I'm sure he was already. Years at that point. Yeah, he was probably already just like, all right, I just gotta have something out, and that's just how the book feels. <laughs> We're well past Guns of the South and the World War series, and <laughs> well, that was the Atlanta series. So what do you have for me now, Tiger Star? Well, uh, the book I did is called The Two Georges, and it's a timeline where. What if George Washington decided to compromise with King George III? You know, we've basically got uh, British America. Oh boy, I'm excited. Uh, See you guys. I guess. <laughs> this is a terrible ending. <laughs>